Boy oh boy, I hope you love My Little Pony, because that's most of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. Who we got Chris's tweets, we have zero tweets from Magichan. We have a video that Chris put up on YouTube. We have an update on the Stay Lit Radio thing with Jacob Sockness. And we have a new DM from Alan Christopher. All of that coming up soon. But to start, Chris's Twitter thread. He says, I've just completed the last pony card for the card game Sonichi deck. I still have a bunch of ship and goal cards to make, but enjoy these two, featuring Patty in her present clothing choices with a background inspired by Umbrella Vinyl's past cover. Don't know who that is, but we see here Patty Chan. This is Chris's dog who died, and in order to deal with his grief, he reincarnated her as an anthropomorphic dog in Quickville. And then, of course, we have put it in my card. I don't know what that means. Oh, is this like a littler drawing of the drawing that we're looking at? That's funny. Anyway, I don't know how this card game is played, so that uh, doesn't mean anything to me. The, the thing that matters is that he finished making the set. And soon he's going to print them. I added some more ship fit cards to the outgoing pile, and I made one that was inspired by the quick pronunciation. Thank you, Tricky Cat. Ha he hashtagged it instead of adding this person. For making the reference in Rose Juice Story to help spell out the situation. So this is a panel from a comic that Chris pretty much just blatantly stole and made part of Sonic Canyon, or like he took parts of it and made them part of his own comics. Because that's the kind of stuff that he does. So we have Welcome to Quickville, Virginia, but because the uh is cut out, it says Virgin, which is actually a very clever joke. Uh, this is the Pokemon Go symbol, so it's pointing in this direction. Or maybe it's just a gym symbol, I actually don't know. CWCville? The locals pronounce it Quickville, actually. I'm guessing it's a foreign language. Weird. Chris continues, Just making this note for reference in tomorrow's created TSSSF cards. Metaphysical Love Poison. Okay. When used, the player must move a start card on the grid and reattach it with this ship card. Man, I play a lot of complicated card games. I play Magic, I play Bakugan, uh, that's it. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! because it's too hard, but this game sounds really not something that I would enjoy. Taking a Burger King break with an impossible Whopper, no mayonnaise. 100% plant-based meat. <laughs> no, that's not what it is, Chris. 0% beef. Their veggie burger has a rivaling king, and it is really yummy. It's not it's not plant-based meat. It's just a veggie burger. And if anyone doesn't know the Impossible Whopper, it's a veggie burger that apparently tastes a lot like a normal hamburger, and so that's why, like, it's getting a lot of news coverage. And Chris ate one because, you know, he still eats at McDonald's and Burger King every single day. That might be a bit of hyperbole, but, you know, he eats there a lot. Here's a new take on an old alt version of Sonichu, Metal Gear Sonichu. You'd think that Chris wouldn't really like uh, Metal Gear, given that, like, the whole Liquid Snake, not Liquid Snake, Liquid Chris, uh, Sons of Kojima, all that stuff. But yeah, here we go, October 23rd, 2019, Chris drew Sonichu as Solid Snake. Originally discovered, of course, discovered, originally discovered and conceived in Little Big Planet many years ago. Minus the headgear and body paint. Okay. Yeah, because um, Chris believes at this point that whenever someone creates a fictional character that's canon in Sonic U, they're just discovering that character. I know that a lot of you already know that, but there are people who are like joining in you know, later into the series and don't know everything that I've discussed before. All right, so it looks like Chris has gotten more of his shipment in of his trading cards. So here we go. Review time part two. I got my next bunch of cards in the mail today, starting off with the bunch of the first two promo cards from me, featuring art from Nubs. I now have my badge for BabsCon as well. Wait, what? I don't think that's how that works. Sorry, and we have a lovely dragon soul as well. Okay, so these are the cards. I get that. But does this mean he's going to BabsCon? That's not like a, a... I don't know what he means by badge. Because like when I go to Comic-Con, when you buy the ticket, your your badge is your ticket. 
and you have to wear it around your neck. I don't know if... I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't know what he means. I'm confused. Oh, <laughs> tweet is unavailable. <laughs> Amazing. Five tweet is unavailables. I, I guess we'll just pick up halfway through this thread. Actually, no, give me one second. Okay, so a lot of people in my Discord will occasionally uh, screenshot a lot of Chris's tweets, and we have a whole channel just for them. But unfortunately, it does not look like we were able to see what these were before he deleted them. So we're just going to have to use context clues. Personally, I do appreciate quality, while also wanting to be thrifty and less expensive. I really like the easy flip box over the traditional... Tra tra no. I really like the easy flip box over the traditional pack box. I am thinking of staying with MPC for the deck and larger expansion packs, and PS for the promos and smaller packs. These are two different printing companies. But he really should not do that, because in the card... Like, quality of the card stock will be different, and you should not have that for a trading card game. Because the sturdy box is very good for the deck player, and one can store plenty of cards in it. But on the other hand, the traditional flip-top box is the typical standard, especially when one looks at the previously released TSSSF packs. Also, the traditional box closes tight and secure, while the easy flip box closes decently tight. It can still slip open for cards to fall out. Unless one, unless one were to take a piece of regular scotch tape with a folded end and attach it to allow for keeping the box better closed. So he's not even judging by the quality of the cards. He's judging by the quality of the box that the cards came in. And if I know anything about people who play TCGs, it's that they just go out and buy Ultra Pros anyway. I would like to offer a vote and get a second opinion. For my deck and packs, would you prefer the easy flip box or the traditional flip top box? And I would delight and appreciate MLP Silver Quills, his friends, and the TSSF. That's just hard to say. I'm just gonna say Twilight from now on. Or or Shipvic. I'll say Shipvic. Sh sh oh my! I can't even say that. I'll just say Card Game from now on. And the Card Games community input on this as well. Thank you. I'm gonna vote this one. Oh yay! I voted for the right one because it's winning. Also, just to inform all of you, this bunch of Card Game. Cards is a love project between Magichan and I. He has enjoyed playing the CCG for himself for years. He has been, and he has been looking forward to work with me on this. And there are plenty of good reasons why we are doing this. And these reasons fit into the faded events as well. Plus, you all will have this opportunity to play the collectible card game with us in it, and we get to invite others into the fray as well which was very socializing and good for me to communicate with everyone. Count this as a blessing. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If the Pope made a trading card game, if the Pope, like, said that playing trading card games counted as blessings, I would be very happy, so. Uh, more unavailable tweets. It looked like he deleted a lot of stuff. And the main event, the OC's expansion pack. So, 40 card expansion pack. Wow. Huh, that's interesting. <laughs> I love when there's a chainsaw outside my window. That's definitely something I can control. Continuing. A lovely look at them all spread out, organized by artists, as well as arranged similar to the goal card. Don't know what goal card means, but here we just get all the little, all the little pictures. I'm not, I don't care if they're loaded. More, more deleted tweets. Personally, I do appreciate quality, while also wanting to be thrifty and less expensive. I really like... Oh, wait, did I already read this? Why does he keep doing it like this? This is dumb. And now, the comparison in quality. Again, between the MPC playing cards and the printer studio, the Arizona slime pack from MPC and the OCs from... <laughs> There's the chainsaw again. Lovely. On the basic gloss option on the cards, between them, the final result is quite similar. The glossiness is the same between them. So these are apparently printed from different people. It's impossible to tell from a picture what the differences are, especially since the art isn't even the same. And then, yeah, I don't know, like, why, why did he go on so many different threads, so many different things? Why is everything deleted? Nonsense. The texture quality to the touch is only a slight difference, barely negligible. As for the boxes, 
MPC uses a thick and sturdy heavy-duty flip box. And Percher Studio uses the basic flip top box that I have been accustomed to, and it fits into the flip box. I don't know what that means. All right. Hey, everyone. I just received my third TSSFF uh, promo card, and I can finally have some more fun. Because two of my goal cards require I, Chris Chan Sanju, to be present on the grid. Hashtag Ben Saint, and then some other people. I'm assuming that these are artists. And here's some more. Feel free to count. I, aside, there are 11 Sanju Rose Chu OCs. Oh, so those are the OCs. On this example grid, they would satisfy the party goals requirement. And, yep, Horse Famous has met Sanju Famous for once. Okay. This card of mine has an easy power that will allow a goal card to be attained if it is skipped in the sequence, as listed, around the cards. In this example, WKBH1983 or Derek <laughs> okay, would be appropriate for the card's right sight. There can't be an alicorn above the card for its... And let's just look at these. This is going to be impossible to read with this like art stuff in the background. This is ridiculous power to work also i'm surrounded by dragons and ideally i would have liked to i would have liked to showed off the commodore blocky phone in the example but since it is the it is in the new deck and that is yet to be completed i went with magic chan's s642 self counterpart instead is it bad that i understand like chris lore and his own like verbiage more than i understand this card game I pray this will inspire more new players to get in on the fun with the pre-existing cards from the past core set, expansions, and promo cards from Horrible People Games and the communities of Children of K... this. And all else. So, uh, last episode, if you saw it, I went on these people's website and said that the game has actually been shut down for many years, so I don't know if people can actually still go out and buy new versions of, like, the actual set. This I just hit the microphone. I don't know if people can actually go out and buy the legitimate cards for this real card game, because they don't exist anymore. Also, for those curious, I will personally hand out copies of promo cards, 1, 2, and 3 at BabsCon next April. A random card out of each three set will be personally autographed. Oh, and I, <laughs> I would feel reminded if I did not bring this up. In an actual Twilight Sparkle secret ship fic something game... There must be a start card on the grid, first and foremost. I didn't have the other cards in immediate reach when I made the earlier examples, so here's an example featuring fanfic author Twilight. Now, just look at the difference in art between like what Chris drew, what this person drew, and what this person drew. It's so funny. For those who ask, here are the rules. Okay, that's good. Which is available in any core deck, and will also be included in the Sonichu deck. I'm not going to read all the rules, but that's nice. Like... I'm, I, I'm actually not making fun of Chris for this. Like, the the fact that he is committing himself to something where, you know, like, he, he's fallen behind the comic book so many times. The fact that he's committing himself to making this card game, that he's actually made all the art, he's actually gotten all the artists together, he's doing, like, promos, he's had demos shipped to his house to, like, assure their quality, he has Jacob, you know, dealing with sending them out and shipping them. Like, this is, this is good. I'm glad that he is doing something. <laughs> doing something is better than doing nothing. And there's nothing wrong with any of these things that he's doing. Except for maybe not crediting the artists. Okay, new topic. Oh, bonus. I just found this on my front porch. Now should I meet you little this? I'll get his autograph. I will enjoy perusing through his book. The Legend of the Ten Elemental Masters. So this looks like a self-published Amazon book, which I know a lot about if you've seen my previous video on Fortnite. Uh, and apparently this is... I would, I would just assume that this is a uh, creator that he likes. <laughs> I regret nothing. Thank you, Ghosty Flame. This is funny. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Zego Neko. I'm working on the remaining goal and ship cards for the Sonichu deck. I'm going through the old books for the situations that would be best suited. I'm sp I am expanding a bit on book one where Blake Sonichi was created. And for the record, Eggman and Skysaur were there together. Okay, so a uh, little background information. At one point, 
when uh, someone convinced Chris to like make Sonichu a real comic, they told him that he couldn't have like real fictional characters like that other people owned in the comic, and they told him that he couldn't have real people. And so that's when he went back and he changed uh, Mary Lee Walsh's name to Slareel Wa- Sla Ryan. Wow, which is, I think is an anagram. Um, I'm fairly certain. I'm sorry if I get this wrong. Like, totally uh, correct me if I get this wrong. That at that time, he retconned the Dr. Eggman character into whoever this guy is, Ren Skysor. Uh, but now that, like, He's not dealing with making the comic real and it all takes place in the other dimension and he has to make all of the issues of the comic like all real together. He's saying that they were there together. That's that, that's what's going on in this tweet. So that's that's just something. That's, that's just everyday dealing with Chris. I see people are still liking Metal Gear Sonic Chew. He and his Rosie will be in the Sonic Chew Rose Chew expansion pack. I will allow a preview of the two of them for your enjoyment. Here's Metal Gear Sonic Chew. Here is Soldier of War, Rosie Rose Chew. <laughs> okay, so it was around this time that Chris put out a video on YouTube. It was about an hour and a half long where he plays through a game uh, using his own cards. So he says, here is a lovely mess of shipping chaos everyone can enjoy. Thank you, Buzzsaw. As I demonstrate how to play. Major props to Harple People Game and Children of Kefinit, whatever this is. So here's a link to the video. We will be watching parts of this later. But we got to finish the more important stories first. So Chris went through and he uh, he posted some like screenshots from the video that he took of like his favorite parts in the game and his favorite cards and stuff like that. And so here's how the game ended. And the game ended with a really full shipping grid. And you can see all of the different arts and cards. And again, you have some pretty good art like this human terrifying rainbow dash thing. And then you have some like Chris art that's just not not good. For those, of, for those who wish to get in on the game with the original core deck and some of the expansions, there are online sellers, as well as convention vendors who sell them. Here are two links. Okay, so this answers my question from before. Even though the game's technically been discontinued, you can still get the old core decks, I guess. So if any of you want to play this game, uh, you totally can. Okay, let's jump to Alan Christopher. I told you about him last time. He lives in the UK, which I... Fairly certain that I said in the last video, even though he starts his next message off with, okay, first of, I live in the UK. Uh, he is a person who has been not taking advantage of Chris, but de def definitely giving into Chris's delusions because he wants to make Sonic you like a real thing. He wants to actually publish Sonic you. Um, one of the things that he wants is he wants to like give some of the money that they would make to like autistic foundations and stuff. But clearly he's just sort of like back... Packing, that's not the word. <laughs> he's just sort of, cut, he, he's living off of Chris's fame. You know, like what I do. Anyway, this is the message that he sent me. Okay, first of, I live in the UK. There are different time zones. How am I supposed to know it's 4am where you live? I'm fairly certain that in my last video, I wasn't like, oh man, why did he message me at 4am? Why is he up so late? I was more just complaining that I received the message at 4am, which is inconvenient for me. He continues, I don't have a world clock in my living room. And what I meant by my last message was that you judge Christine and Jacob purely on everything the trolls say. Are you sure about that, Alan? Are you sure that my video series, in which I read directly Chris's words from his Twitter account and from videos he makes, and I also read directly from Jacob's Reddit, from Jacob's, Jacob's, from Jacob's YouTube, and from Jacob's Twitter, are you sure that those are just me taking things that the trolls say and not me using their actual words? I don't know, because I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. But I don't know. I'm not the expert here. He continues, So what, you're going to create a video on me now, too? Nope, never said that. Absolutely did not say that I was going to do that. By all means, go ahead. Nope, still, I'm not going to do it. But don't badmouth Christine or Jacob. If Jacob wanted to hurt Christine, he would have done it a long time ago. Yes, because he totally had the ability to do so. If he was that desperate, he wouldn't have waited that long to do something. Have some common sense. Um, I'm actually going to be putting out multiple videos about Jacob later this week. I'm starting a series called The Jacob Files because there's been a lot more information unearthed about him. And I'm going to summarize it and go through some interviews and stuff that he's given. And, uh, yeah, he's 
definitely a danger to Chris as far as like uh, ritual sacrifices and stuff goes. Like that level of dangerous. <sighs> Alan continues. Jacob is right. They're definitely, they're definitely laws against slandering vulnerable online. Here in the UK, you can be given a fine for it, or worse, face a lengthy prison sentence. Yes, Alan, but you see, I do not live in the UK. I live in America, and we have freedom of speech laws, and I can do whatever I want as long as I'm not lying about them or threatening them. Which is funny, because Jacob has threatened me in the past. Anyway, continuing. And what exactly is wrong with me creating a fundraiser for Christine? Half of the money from the first one I made was actually going to be donated to the Ark of the United States, an organization that helps disabled people. It was also going to Autism UK, too, so it was actually helping others, too. There is nothing wrong with helping a friend fulfill their dreams. I agree. But you are enabling Chris, which is a bad thing in general. And also, there was no way that your GoFundMe was ever going to be fully funded. So it doesn't really matter that your intentions were to give the money to charity, because you and I both know that it was never going to happen. And now we're going to look at Chris's pony video, the hour and a half long tutorial about how to play his Twilight Sparkle whatever thing game. Hello everybody, this is Christine Chandler coming to you live from home with a complicated camera view because we're going to play a card game on this thing. Uh, sit down over here. And because people are curious, they want to know, we're going to play Twilight Sparkle's Secret Shipvic Folder. And not just with the old core deck, which we have all the cards right here, but with the expansion packs we have collected so far. So among which included... Alright, um, so yeah, we got the, the currently deck as printed by the Children of Confense, version 1.1.6, as well as the few promo cards in this concoction we have. Also, the Arizona Slime Expansion Pack and the Sanchi and Loshu OCs Pack, as well as my three promo cards so far. These are just extras. Okay, what did I do with the other one? Ah, it took me a long time to set all this up, you know, just I sort out everything so I can make sure I had enough sleeves for everybody I managed I managed and I was able to get all that, so because this is quite a bit of work and I'm gonna offer a bit of Commentary oh, that's why I put that. So this is just Chris getting ready. He has some official cards and some of his own, and he seems pretty happy. I'm honestly glad that he was able to follow through with this new hobby. As the video goes on, he seems pretty knowledgeable about the subject, which makes sense because he's been playing TCGs for a long time. But yeah, you got pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much going to demonstrate a game of Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Pick Folder, albeit play Solitaire, which I have been able to figure out recently. <sighs> in case you're wondering what that was, that's our cat, Baby. Our gold cat, Baby. He has a bit of a nasal problem. We're, got, we're taking him to the vet. He's alright. Okay? We're taking care of him. So, don't ask about that. Don't troll me about that. Do not troll me about that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, guess what? I'm trolling you all back. Trolling the trolls back. <laughs> there. Troll y'all back if y'all troll me. You've been trolling me for years. Anyway, aside from that. I didn't take Chris that long to bring up the trolls, did it? The reason that we, and I don't just mean the trolls, I mean like everyone, care about Chris's cats is because you've let so many of them die, Chris. I'll just take your word for it that you're taking this one to the vet because I know that there are people who give you money and help you do things like that, but you have to stop getting new cats. They are better off in the wild or with literally anyone else, and I don't know why I'm talking like he can hear me, but I'm, I'm angry because... I've been covering his cats dying for a year now, and it's upsetting. 
Anyway, nice to have them in sleeves. Nice to have a bunch of matching sleeves that work. Yeah. I know it's thinner if you don't have the sleeves, but eh, this is how I like to play. This is one way of doing it, and it's a good way of doing it. So, do 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 do. Anyway, well, there's the deck of go cards with the uh, the on the back, and we get to set up our Get to that in a little while. Oh, well, that, I'm, now I'm shuffling the ship deck, all these cards together. You can watch me shuffle, you're watching me. Chris Chan Sanchu shuffling decks. Because why not? It's good, it's awesome, have fun. Yay! I know. Put these out here, because whatever. Something for y'all, something else y'all can look at. Free advertising to the other artists that have made expansion packs. Why not? Just do not troll them. No trolling allowed! Haters, you can squell your hate. And I'm not reading your comments either, so, I mean, look where the camera is and where I am. I am. I would have to read from the opposite side. I'm not on that side, so. You're blowing on deaf ears, your hater comments. But. Still setting up. As someone who has live streamed before, I can understand the pressure to feel like you have to fill every moment with commentary, but Chris just mumbling to himself in the middle there was a little concerning, as is his fixation with the trolls. No trolling allowed, he yelled. Just the thought of them crossing his mind just makes him angry. I agree with him that you shouldn't harass the artist involved in his card game, and I understand why he's upset, because the trolls made the brony analyst not want to talk to him. But him thinking that he can decree that there is to be no trolling shows that he still doesn't understand that his audience are not actual fans of his. Uh, next, you're going to see Chris explain the rules for a little bit, and then have a small spasm. Okay, now this is where things can get a little nasty. I'm gonna move right over there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna activate her effect. I'm not going, to, I'm not going to do that. But essentially, what we just did, we broke up two ships, because there's nobody attached to this ship, so she's not attached to anybody, and neither of these events are no longer applicable. So they go to the discard pile. <laughs> So that sound was concerning. There are a lot of theories for Chris's strange outbursts, everything from Tourette's to spasms caused by his poor diet. But as long as he's going untreated for it, and as long as he's driving, I think it's bad. I'm not saying that people with spasms shouldn't be allowed to drive. There were actually times when I had similar problems as Chris, but I don't think it's good that Chris is being neglected like he obviously is. Oh, let's do this. Let's make, let's say we're a man and friend with... The Bob Queen. Yeah, let's just pretend it's Twilight Sparkle, why not? There I said. Oh, why not think of that? Twilight Sparkle. The emergency broadcast alert. There's a missing child that just been adopted earlier this week. They're just alerting everybody. That's still going on the airways. That's what that noise is about. I don't have anything to say about that. I just think that Chris's dismissal is funny. Next, we're about to get a surprise appearance from who I assume is Barb. Hi, Barb. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's Lucy. Hi, Lucy. See you. Oh, regular. It's not my thing now who Lucy is. Anyway, look, I'm just swapping around. I can not like this effect. I'm not going to ship that. Hi, Lucy. Stay off the table. Hi, Lucy. Stay off the table. Ah, thank you. You have to get off the table. Barb just tossed Chris's cat, Lucy, off the table. I don't think he was, like, mean and, like, my cat jumps off me from higher heights, 
but the fact that Chris is just doing this in their living room and Barb is walking around listening to him talk about cards is amusing to think about. Oh, and uh, this is how the video ends. Oh, well, anyway, this has been fun. I hope y'all enjoyed this, and y'all can enjoy watching it over and over again. This was me shuffling the very super califragilistic espialatociously large pony deck. I have a heavy bag here for you to put in the trash. I'll get to you in a moment, Mom. I love you, and I love you all. Be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye. Boop. Gee, I can't wait to watch this video over and over again. I just love watching Chris shuffle. So there wasn't really much to see, and yes, I did watch the entire hour and a half long video. Chris doesn't really explain how to play the game, so the entire video itself is pointless, but if you want to watch it, I'll link it in the description. The comments are disabled, so, you know, that's, that's neat. Uh, also, there's this. Oh no! Next, we're going to look at this incomprehensible tweet that Sockness sent me. I'm currently on a diet, and I tweeted this out. When I'm craving unhealthy food and turn to my oven for guidance, and if you can't read it, the oven display says, end self. So Jacob responds, Get full super quick. Get a bag of baby spinach. Eat like a third of it before a meal. You'll feel up really fast and stay full. That caused me to only eat breakfast and a snack for dinner and be just fine. Uh, so Jacob is giving me diet advice, and uh, look at him. I don't, I don't think he's doing so good himself. Still on the topic of Jacob, uh, Stay Lit Radio put out a video about their Jacob interview where they said that it was canceled, but that they might try it again in the future. They might even accompany Jacob to Chris's house if Jacob goes there again. They ended their video um, about this announcement with this. Stay lit, fam. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Savage. So we're here at Pier 39, and I do have someone with me, actually. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, the interview is not going to happen. Plans well, didn't fall through as I was hoping. Trolls got in the way as usual. I was trying to warn you about that actually but you know it was gonna it was bound to happen yeah no well, i'll keep trying i ain't giving up i mean maybe not right now but later way later down the road maybe uh there will be an interview uh we're hoping so we're hoping so but for right now i was talking just privately with uh jacob sockness and um well i'm not going to discuss what we were talking about but you know, it is what it is, but we got to go. Uh, our trolley is here, and uh, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Rock on! <laughs> Jeez, the way she rode it, it's not like she was not like Barb wanted to free wanted to ride rather than her. Wait, she was like messaging you going, uh, she wanted to... She was actually just talking about Barb wanting, wanting fun. And it didn't sound like just normal fun either. To me, it sounded like it was like going a little naughty. Yeah, I, I didn't need to know that. I really didn't. <laughs> she gonna fucking just mount you. And I guess my dick's gonna go turtle that. It's gonna be turtle and ain't coming back out ever again. <coughs> oh, you can do my singing video. Uh, uh, no thanks. I'm, I'm good. One of my followers also spotted Jacob in the wild and took these photos of him. He claimed that Jacob got annoyed at climate protesters who were making it difficult for him to cross the street. So that was the video for this week. As I said before, I'm doing multiple videos on Jacob later in the week. There is more stuff that Jacob did, and they very much need to be discussed. Um, his books have been leaked to some uh, people in the inner circles of Chris followers, and he's... There have also been, um, let's just say, private interviews with Jacob that I have been privy to and that I can share some of. So I will be going through all of those, and we will be discussing him more in the future. November 1st is also the first year anniversary of me discussing Chris on this channel, and I'm probably going to do something special for that. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin.